Hey, if you'd like to support the production of more MOOF University video tutorials, then please visit the Support MOOF section on MOOFUniversity.com. Thank you and enjoy. I'm not entirely certain how helpful this video will be, but I know that I like to look at pathways, you know, from a big, I like to see the big picture and kind of what's going on overall. So I hope that this summary will kind of help under, help you understand what's going on with, with, uh, the overall process of cholesterol synthesis and the reactants and requirements, so on and so forth. Um, the question would be maybe like how many acetyl CoAs are used, mevalonates made, CO2 is lost, ATP used, etc., things like that. And um, I want to think about that here in this video, but one thing that I have to note is that anything that I say will be excluding the 19 steps between lanosterol and cholesterol because I don't actually know what happens there. So everything else that we've covered, though, um, we should kind of think about, you know, what's used, what's what happens there. Okay. So let's let's do this. Let's think about the stages going backwards, starting from one cholesterol molecule. So we have one 27 carbon cholesterol molecule here, and it came from squalene. And in this process, we used one NADPH, and we lost three carbons. Uh, two as uh, carbon dioxide and one as formic acid here. Okay, so how did we get the squalene? The squalene came from from the condensation of six IPP uh, molecules, each of them, of course, being five carbons. Now, um, two of them were converted to DMAPP in order to actually have the reactions occur, but the DMAPP is came from IPP, so it's not unfair to say that six IPPs were just kind of put together to make squalene, and that of course required an NADPH. Where did we get these IPPs from? We got them from avalonate, each of them, and in each of those reactions we lost one carbon dioxide, and we, were, we used up three ATPs. So if we total that up, that, that means we've got their um, what is that, 3 times 6, right, so that's 18 ATP molecules used. Okay. And here we have 6 carbon dioxides that leave okay. produced. How do we get these mevalonates? Well, each mevalonate came from a reaction of basically putting together 3 acetyl-CoA's and putting together these 3 two carbon molecules to give one mevalonate required two NADPHs. And if that's going to happen six times to produce these mevalonates, that's six times two NADPHs. That is 12 NADPHs there, NADPHs used. And how many acetyl-CoA's do we have here? Well, we have three for each of these reactions. There are six total reactions. Three times six is 18 acetyl-CoA's, 18 acetyl-CoA's. Okay, so we have 18 acetyl CoA's. We get six mevalonates out of those by using 12 NADPHs. Um, the six mevalonates are each converted to IPP, losing one carbon dioxide each time, and using ATP, 18 ATP molecules to get there. And then we use another NADPH here. So if we consider to start counting these 12, that would that would be 13 right there to make the squalene, and 14 there to make the cholesterol. So we used 14 total. NADPH is used. Um, we had, we said how many ATPs? We said 18 ATPs, 18 total ATP molecules used. And how many carbon dioxides were produced? Well, we had six here, going from evalonate to IPP, and then we lost two up here as well. So that's going to be 18 carbon dioxides produced. Okay. Eight carbon dioxides produced. Um, so I hope that just, I mean, I don't know how meaningful these numbers really are, but I kind of like to look at the overview, and this is kind of messy and kind of crazy, so if you need to pause it and stop it and look at this a little bit more carefully, uh, please do so. But I wanted to kind of show you the big picture and as far as what goes into creating one cholesterol molecule. So I hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching and be sure to like, comment, subscribe and share the video with anyone who you think might find it helpful.
Thanks, and happy studying.